Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Wind Ensembles Brass Choir. We have uh, two main selectors that we're going to uh, play for you this evening. We're playing the first and fourth movement of the Sasato Suite, and then we're also playing a Western Fanfare by Eric E. Wazen.
because they're also different. Um, that's a great job. You, 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 play, you play three pieces that are all um, really different from one another. So I, I'm going to take you through each piece in the order that you did them. So if you look at Susato, the, the first movement, um, which, which musical time period is this music from? No. No. Too recent. This is Renaissance style. So if, if you go to Renaissance festival, you're walking around with a big turkey leg in your hand, and you know everything is sort of mucky, and you know it's this is that's the time period that this music is from. It's from the 1500s. Now, if you were to take this group and transform back to the Renaissance period and play what you did, they wouldn't know what they wouldn't know what hit them. Because, for the most part, the instruments that you're playing just really didn't they didn't exist. Trombone has been around like since the dawn you know, of time, virtually unchanged. But the rest of the instruments, there's no valves and, and nothing like that. So the style. For the first movement, I, I think would if there's a word that comes to mind is austere. It's it's regal music. It's the king of the hour and his queen until he goes all Game of Thrones or something. It, it's like this is this is the entrance of that person. It's majestic music, um, but it's still not it's not overstated. So maybe think about articulation style. It's, it's still light because of the time period, and it's, it's separated. And if you look at dynamics from that time period of music, really there were two. There was piano and forte. Any, anything that is M anything is sort of a, um, I, I think it's sort of an attempt by an arranger to offer um, a little bit more interest and contrast, but really that time period it was piano and forte. That was it. So I think as an ensemble, if you can work more to create that maybe time appropriate performance, particularly the soft, the, the piano sections, because you have great sound, it's well centered, it's it's well in tune. But from a from a style standpoint and a time appropriate standpoint, you want to really have extremes because it should almost sound like echoes. You know, the, the, the horns off in the distance, the horns right here. That was a lot of the technique that was used by Renaissance composers. It was it was like echo and call and response. And so that that movement sort of that sort of exemplifies that era. Then the fourth movement, um, it's it's sort of like a like a polonaise. It's it's a it's a it's like a early form of the waltz. This is where all the girls in the frou frou dresses they all they all come out and they come in the center and they join hands and they go around in a circle and the guys are circling and then they kind of come around you know it's like you know it's it's again it's majestic dance music but it's kind of understated and this one I think from a style standpoint I think you nailed this this. It's got a nice, it's got a nice buoyant feel to it. You know, we know exactly who's leading, and we know exactly who's complimenting. So I, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the fourth movement, and then the the, um, the articulation is there. You got to really be really centered at the beginnings of the notes. It means having a good breath of air, quick tongue, get that tongue down and out of the way after making the initial attack. That way the air can come out and through the instrument, have good vibrations so that you've got a centered pitch right away. And then um, the, the Western, the Western um, tune, the third movement of this, I have not, I've not heard this one, although it's the second Oasis piece I've heard today. This one, this one's very contemporary. Okay, so this one's probably like within the last 10 years. So you can tell, obviously you're really good musicians, you can, you can hear that the, the harmonies are really, Really different. There's a lot of tight harmonies. There's a lot of there's a lot of dissonance and then consonance, <coughs> and that's that's the way that the composer is is creating 
tension and release, tension and release. And so those moments where there's a little bit more dissonance, you, you want to really work to tune within those chords because even within dissonance, there's there's pitch responsibilities. You know, you have a cluster chord with with six people playing half steps and whole steps. At some point, there's still are, there's still relationships throughout that chord, and there, there's there's a lot of that throughout this particular piece. Um, you have to really really work to to hone your ears on some of those really, what I would call, advanced harmonies. Um, the thing that, from a technical standpoint, there's, there's usually two things that are happening. There's usually upper voices that are playing and underneath, all the low voices have these sort of terraced pyramid entrances. And I, I sort of miss that. Maybe it's because of how I'm sitting. Like I'm at your level, and and you know, <coughs> I think if I stood up, I would probably have maybe heard it differently. But whenever you have moving parts underneath a, a corral, the timing of those those entrances is really important. You subdividing eighth notes ahead of time so that you know exactly where those notes are going to come in. Um, I think it's I think it's interesting having the horns in front of the trumpets. I've not heard that before. I actually kind of like it. It's really, I've, I've, not done, I've not ever done that before. I actually kind of like it. Because um, you guys can oftentimes get lost because your instrument from a geometry standpoint is really <coughs> points that way, <laughs> right? And so bringing you guys forward, I think it's a, I, I think it's a really good choice. I, I like that. And you know, trumpets, you guys are really strong. Like all the way across the arc, you're really strong. And so they sort of work as a mute almost, where I never really felt like you guys were just overpowering. And, and I, I appreciate that. A lot of it is good training and just good musicianship on your part, but I, I appreciate that. Um, Tubas, you guys have a stalwart task in that last piece because you've got, you got some pretty tough little figures and you have some really, really low notes. You know, it's you know, like three, four ledger lines below the staff. It's really challenging to have that range of the instrument project through all the upper register stuff like that. You know, keep eating your Wheaties and, you know, do lots of cardio. That's <laughs> the way you can get that going. It's really good playing. Really good playing. Very impressed. Keep playing together. You, got, you, have, you have a pretty good teacher over here. You listen to what he says all the time. He kind of knows what he's talking about. Good job. Thank you.